Welcome everyone. This is uh, part four, the steps to solutions and how to handle your emotions. God has a purpose for everything. Even the storm clouds in your life are no accident. Depression can open your eyes to God's unique design for you. Before, during, and after your bouts with despondency, remember, Storms replenish dry and parched ground, and they give birth to flowers and a new life in the spring. Part A, a key verse to memorize. If you encounter a violent storm while traveling, you are faced with two choices. Keep going or pull over to a safe spot and wait it out. The storm clouds of depression are no different. You face the choices of seeking help, riding it out alone, seeing God's perspective or becoming drenched in bitterness. No matter how long the sky has been overcast or your soul has been downcast, you can rest in the words of the psalmist who said in Psalm 27, verse 13, I am still confident of this. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. A key passage, part B, a key passage to read and reread. While we can't choose what we inherit genetically, we can choose what we dwell on cognitively. In the medical world, brain scans of those suffering from depression show marked improvement when words of hope, affirmation, and purpose are continually reinforced. In this respect, life is a series of choices. You can choose today to put the word of God into action. First Theologians chapter 5, verses 16, 16 through 24. <clears throat> be joyful always choose to write down and continually focus on the positives in your, in your life pray continually choose to talk to god about everything give thanks in all circumstances choose to thank god for what you are learning right now do not put out do not put out the spirit's fire choose to change when god's spirit convicts you to make a change do not treat prophecies with contempt. Choose to take God's word seriously. Test everything. Choose to ask, is this right in God's sight? Hold on to the good. Choose to do right even when you are tempted to do wrong. Avoid every kind of evil. Choose to, choose to turn immediately from temptation. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Choose to see how God has set you apart, sanctified you to be what he intended you to be. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. Choose to commit your whole being to doing what God created you to do. The one who calls you, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Choose to rely on God's power to do what you are called to do. See how to take off the mask of mask depression. As we endure painful events in our lives, we can sweep them under the rug and ignore them. However, in doing so, we fail to grieve over our hurts and losses. By masking our depression, we try to protect our hearts and hide who we really are and what we don't want to face. But this kind of masquerade blocks our maturity and our ability to have intimacy with God and others. Don't ever fear admitting your personal disappointments, the painful truths about your life directly to God. Allow him to help you see the reality of your pain from his perspective. He will reveal how he will work through you, how, how he will work through your pain to give you wisdom about life and true depths of understanding. As David said to God in Psalm chapter 51, verse six, surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place my time <clears throat> my timeline draw a long timeline representing your life divide the timeline into three sections childhood youth adult denote the major changes in your life draw short horizontal lines extending from timeline Extending from the timeline and write on each line all significant events in your life, both positive and negative. 
including all major hurts and griefs. Determine whether they are sad experiences or significant losses and hurts that you have not faced. Thwarted goals, unjust criticism, unrealized dreams, rejection, false accusations, failures. Discover the source of your masks of your masked pain through earnest prayer. Prayer for discovery. Heavenly Father, as your child, I come to you for help. Calm my heart. Enable me to see what I need to see. Make me aware of my need for healing and show me your truth. Bring to my mind any hidden hurt in my heart and the exact circumstances that caused it. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Define the emotional impact that each event had on you with specific statements such as, this made me feel like I am grieving over I was so embarrassed when I felt abandoned by I was really hurt when I've been determined to never let to never let that thing happen again. Decide to allow deep, genuine grieving over your losses. You, oh God, do see trouble and grief. You consider it to take in hand. The victim commits himself to you. Psalm chapter 10, verse 14. Diffuse the power that the event has over your emotions by sharing it with someone you trust and with God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 7. There is a time for everything, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. Deepen your dependence on the Lord to set you free emotionally. In anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. Psalm 118 verse 5. A prayer for healing. Dear Lord Jesus, help me to allow you to minister to my wounded heart. I I know that you understand my pain. I know that you have the power to make me whole. Thank you for loving me. Thank you that I can have confidence that you will set me free. In your holy name I pray. Amen. In Jeremiah 17 verse 14, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. Part D, depression and the whole person. The three, the three, the three parts of a person, as illustrated by these two gingerbread men portrayed, portrayed, every person is created with a tangible body, a tangible soul, and intangible and 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 an intangible spirit, which makes us all tr- tritomas, tritomas beings. A person, as with three parts, the following is true: your body is your physical makeup, your flesh, bones, and blood. Your soul is your personality, your mind, will, and emotions. Your spirit is your innermost part that needs salvation, craves gratification of your deepest needs for love, significance, and security. And in the believer houses and in the believer houses the Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve were privileged to enjoy God's presence and even speak with him. They had spiritual life because the human spirits were alive to God. Their God-given need for love, significance, and security were met by God himself, warned by God that eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would bring death. Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and indeed something died. They lost spiritual life. You and I are born in the likeness of Adam, dead to God's spirit until we receive his gift, until we receive his gift of new life in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Medical doctors have long stated that how you respond to life's disappointments has a direct impact on your body. Likewise, depression can have a profound effect on both your soul and spirit. God encourages us to seek him for healing and health in all three areas of life, body, soul, and spirit. 
1 Theologians chapter 5, verse 23, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First, combating depression in the body. The increase in cases of depression today may be directly related to unhealthy eating habits. Consider, for example, that Jesus probably ate fresh fish every day because fresh fish was a common and and healthy staple eaten in the fish sta- stable eaten in the region where he lived. Jesus fed the multitudes of 5,000 men and then 4,000 as well as the women and children by taking 12 loaves of bread and a few small fish. And he often mentioned fish in his teaching analogies. Luke chapter 11, verse 11, verse 11. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? If you are suffering with prolonged depression, get a thorough medical checkup. First, tell your doctor you feel unusually depressed. Be specific. Ask your doctor to evaluate all medications you are taking and eliminate what is unnecessary. Ask your doctor if any of your medications could contribute to depression. If so, could a substitute be prescribed? Develop regular sleep habits. Sleep is therapeutic. Only during deep sleep does the brain produce serotonin, which alleviates depression. Set a regular time to go to sleep and to rise. Maintain a regular active schedule. Be actively involved in and outside functions, such as spiritual and social functions, which impact brain function. Accept invitations to be with others, even if you don't feel like it. Eliminate stress. Avoid being overly fatigued. Set aside regular quiet times of relaxation. Eat nutritional meals. Researchers have discovered a link between diet and the rise of depression. A key role in normal brain development and function is played by the chemical mechanism called fatty acid metabolism. A.J. Richardson writes, Omega-6 and Omega-3 fatty acids are crucial for normal brain structure and function and must be derived and must be derived from the diet. Lack of omega-3s is, is to believe to be linked to lower levels of serotonin in the and norepinephrine in the brain and these lower levels are known to have a correlation to depression avoiding caffeine alcohol salt fast food and junk food <clears throat> especially avoid foods containing trans fats found in cereals cookies chips margarine which block the absorption of omega 3s and other nutrients for several days after consumption. Stay away from sugar, including sugary sodas, to avoid the sugar blues, a condition caused when sugar consumption temporarily boosts when temporarily boosts sugar levels, which then plummet just as quickly. Drink six to eight gla- to eight glasses of water a day. Include in your diet on a regular basis cold water, fish containing omega-3s, mainly salmon, trout, sardines, mackerel, and tuna, and dark leafy green vegetables containing omega-6s. Contact an informed nutritionist. Find out about therapeutic, um, find out about the therapeutic amounts of fish oil, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, and other vitamins and minerals that can help combat depression through increased levels of serotonin. Adopt a vitamin D regimen to increase levels of serotonin. Take a good daily vitamin with zinc and magnesium. Research trials have indicated that increased consumption of omega-3 fatty acids can result in a significant reduction of symptoms of bipolar disorder, antisocial and violent behavior, as well as unipolar depression. Exercise regularly, walk or jog or swim for at least four days a week. 20 minutes of brisk walking releases endorphins, a natural mood, a natural mood elevator. Spend time in the sun, enjoying God's beautiful creation. Research reveals that 30 minutes of sunshine can help alleviate depression. Too little sun produces melatonin. 
which can cause lethargy. Pet a pet. Giving affection to an animal lowers blood pressure, relieves stress, and allows an increase in good mood chemicals. Laugh out loud. At least one good belly laugh a day releases helpful amount of serotonin and nor norepinephrine. Try reading funny stories or watching a funny movie or comedy on TV for therapy. Provides <laughs> proverbs. Pardon me. Proverbs chapter <laughs> Proverbs chapter seventeen verse twenty two says that a cheerful heart is good medicine. <laughs> the oh. This prayer from the Bible should encourage each of us to care for and take responsibility for our physical health. Third John chapter two, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Question. Recently, I moved to a town that has gloomy weather and now I'm feeling gloomy. Everything else in my life is positive. What can I do? As if the fog outside my window has invaded my mind and muddled my thinking. Answer. <clears throat> Seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, is a form of depression associated with deprivation of sunlight. SAD, also called the winter blues, typically, be typically begins in the fall when the days become shorter and there is less sunlight. It subsides in the spring as the days get longer. Too little sunlight entering the eye produces, produces in the brain a hormone called melatonin, which is released with the onset of darkness. Too much melatonin creates a biochemical imbalance in the hypothalamus region of the brain. In animals, melatonin controls hibernation and causes a decrease in activity. In humans, SAD causes symptoms such as excessive sleep, lethargy, overeating, and depression. The best treatment for SAD is light. Light is therapeutic. Avail yourself of any and every opportunity to spend in natural sunlight, outdoor reading, or exercise, morning or afternoon walks. You can purchase a specifically designed light box that produces artificial light and expose your eyes to that light for 30 minutes or with for 30 minutes to two hours daily. Vacation in places where you can enjoy sunshine. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 7. Light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. Two, combating depression in the soul. When you have lost a significant relationship, whether by rejection, divorce, or death, it is normal for you to be depressed. However, after a period of time, normal healing should occur. If your heart has not resumed its natural shape, your heart could be in a state of depression. Because, because the entire soul, mind, will, and emotions is affected by depression. Recovery involves taking steps to treat depression in all three areas of the soul. Each part touched by depression needs to be reached with healing. The mind. What your mind dwells on can be a key ingredient to overcoming chronic depression. Research verifies that what a person chooses to think about literally changes the chemistry of the brain. You need to fill your thinking with God's thinking. Fill your mind with God's perspective and promises. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Write several scriptures on index cards and read them and read them several times a day. Make a list, my Thanksgiving list, of seven blessed aspects of your life and spend time every day thanking God for those specifically. Next week, list seven specifics for which you can thank God. Each week thereafter, keep adding to the list. By looking at God's word, you can discover God's purpose for allowing the painful losses in your life. God is your redeemer and he has a purpose for allowing everything, even the storms in your life. Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent forth his word and healed them. Bring light into the darkness. In order to combat depression, first write out your dark, first write out your dark thoughts. Then as your rebuttal, write out what God says. Ask the Lord and a friend for help 
with the wording. Then whenever dark thoughts come, use cognitive therapy on yourself, which simply means replacing your dark thoughts of depression with the light of truth. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 29. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Dark thoughts. I cannot escape this darkness. Light of truth. The Lord will bring light into my darkness. Psalm, Psalm 18, verse 28. My God turns my darkness into light. Dark thoughts. I feel like I have no refuge, no safe haven. Light of truth, the Lord will be my refuge. Psalm 16, verse 1. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Dark thoughts. I feel like I am in too much trouble. Light of truth. The Lord is my help in the Lord is my help in trouble. In Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Dark thoughts. I can't help feeling so restless. The light of truth. My God gives my soul rest. Psalm 62 verse 1. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Dark thoughts. I can't see the path I should take. The light of truth. The Lord will direct my path. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Dark thoughts. My burden is too heavy to bear. Light of truth. The Lord is my burden bearer. Psalm 68, verse, verse 19. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Dark thoughts. I am afraid to be around people. The light of truth, the Lord will give me strength to be around people. Psalm 27, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Dark thoughts, my confidence is completely shaken. Light of truth, the Lord will keep my life from being shaken. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. The will. People who have prolonged depression often have a paralysis of the will and feel that life has stripped them of their choices. They feel stranded in the middle of the storm with no real options. But that is far from the truth. While it is true that life is sprinkled with unavoidable discouragement, you can avoid letting your mind become drenched with discouragement. That is your choice. It's an act of the will. After an initial downpour, you can choose to stay in bed, procrastinate, and rely on yourself for relief. Or you can choose to get underneath God's umbrella of protection and rely on him. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. John 14 verse 1. You can choose to trust the Lord with your life. He is worthy of your trust. Even if you don't feel like it, listen to uplifting and inspirational music. Keep your living environment bright and cheerful. Maintain a clean and uncluttered em 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 environment. Clear your home of objects associated with activities related to the demonic or the occult. Resist long periods of time on the telephone which keep you from accomplishing what is needed. Avoid spending too much time watching TV. Write thank you and encouragement notes to others. Set small attainable goals every day. Look for something you can do for someone else each day and you will experience God's truth that indeed is more blessed that it is God's truth that indeed it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20 Verse 35, Pre preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. The, the emotions, 
Often people who are depressed have difficulty expressing their feelings in a healthy way. A common cause of depression is buried feelings as a result of lost or past hurts. Yet ignored or denied feelings won't go yet ignored or denied feelings won't go away. They are buried alive deep inside your soul where they fester and create an infection that produces poison in your body. That is why it is vital to face your feelings. Bring your heartache and hurts, your anger and anxieties, your fear and frustrations to Jesus. Pour out your heart to him and receive his comfort. He alone understands the depth of your pain. The Bible assures us that in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 through 16, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Question. What is anniversary depression? Anniversary depression is a yearly reoccurring depression related to the anniversary date of a traumatic event triggered by painful memories. This, invol this involuntary emotional reaction lasts for only a limited period of time. Some examples. Many women dive into a depression each year around the anniversary of the abortion of their child or the anniversary of placing their child into another home for adoption. Widowed men and women can have the anniversary depression around the date of their mate's death. The Bible speaks of being murdered. Mired in the pain from the past, but also offers the key to getting unstuck and restoring our hope. We have to make the choice to change our focus. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 23. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Here are some ways to deal with anniversary depression. Understand that your depression is rooted in a real loss from your past and that what you are experiencing is not uncommon. Acknowledge your emotions, write out all painful memories and process them with the helpful person you can trust. Release your pain to the Lord and receive his comfort and healing. Lord, you know the pain I felt over, specifically list each hurt, failure, and each person associated with the pain. I now release this pain into your hands. Set me free in my soul and spirit. Thank you for wanting, me, thank you for wanting to heal me and make me whole. In your precious name I pray. Amen. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, verse 18. Anticipate any upcoming anniversary and plan ahead for ways to counter possible depression. For existence, plan a trip with someone or arrange a social event so you will not be alone, so your mind will be focused on something other than the past event. Turn your anniversary date into an occasion that will produce new and positive memories by serving others in a meaningful way. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. 3. The Spirit. The security and strength of every Christian is the, is the day by day indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 reveals that God's plan that God's plan for you to be an overcomer not by might nor by power but by his spirit since he is literally since he is literally God living within you you are to live dependently on him you are to live dependently on him for everything even even in the depths of your despair and the darkness of your depression God is with you for his spirit is within you. 
When you cry in the night, he sees every teardrop and holds your soul as a mother holds her crying infant to her heart. Though you do not see him with your physical eyes nor feel him with your physical touch, you can see him with your spiritual eyes and you can experience his joy and his peace, which transcends which transcends all understanding. <clears throat> Philippians chapter four, verse seven. He promises to give you hope for your heart to overcome depression. Look not to yourself, but to him who is the God of hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> 